Okay, uh, I guess you can call this trap preparation part two. Uh, today I've got my um, <clears throat> my Atlantic Provinces Trapper Education Student Manual out. Uh, I got this when I did my trapper course probably about three or four years ago. Um, and today I've got some new boards. Most of them are new. Some of them have been used once or twice, but for the most part they're new. Uh, that I'm putting marks on. I'm getting my length for my sizes from my Trapper Education uh, book uh, because I know that they're correct. They're what the the uh, graders are looking for uh, in terms of length. So, uh, like for example, this is a mink. In my book it says uh, small is under 17, medium is 17 to 18, large, medium is up to 21, uh, large, extra large is over 21. So I'm using those sizes and I'm using my tape measure and uh, I'm uh, putting them on my new boards. There's a male mink board. I've got my sizes there. And see, if I didn't have those on there, and I've learned this in the past, if I didn't have those lines on there, um, what happens if a mink, if I have a mink and they stretch down to a bit right there, just short of a medium, right? I mean, that little tiny bit is not going to hurt the, the pelt a little bit just to stretch, you know, a, a quarter inch. Um, but it'll get me more money if I did. So the lines are very important on your boards. Um, I use a pen for a reason. Um, I had a Sharpie, and uh, I used a Sharpie on some of my older boards. Um, but, actually that's not a really good example. This is a better one. But uh, after about a year or so, and, you know, a bit of... Uh, grease and stuff from the animals put on my boards and whatever. Uh, I noticed that the marker started to wear off, and I couldn't. I had a hard time to even find uh, where the line was. But with a pen, because this is soft wood, I've actually created a dent right across. Uh, so even if, if this ink wears off, it's no trouble to trace it again. I can just run a line right back across it because there's a groove right across the board. It's very soft wood. So, uh, there's a little tip for today. Uh, also, my traps that I dipped the other day and getting ready for trapping, uh, I put underneath, in a container underneath this wheelbarrow here. I'll leave them there for a while. There, there's a lot less human scent out here than what there would be in my shed with gas and cleaners and all that stuff in there. Uh, I've also got my snares hung up right here. Um, and uh, I'm probably going to leave them there until trapping season. And, uh, well, here's some fresh, uh, well, I guess it's not fresh, old uh, fat fry oil that I'm going to take up and put in a tree for my bear bait because bear season opens in a couple weeks. So, anyhow, I hope this helps someone who's a new trapper and they're looking for um, tips in, ter in terms of sizing and how to get the best bang for your buck in terms of... Uh, of uh, size of a pelt. Uh, I should also say that you should never stretch over stretch a pelt. You should never have to pull on it and yank it down, stretch it out, because then you thin out the fur on the pelt, and it's not worth as much then to a grader. But if it's just a half an inch or an inch, or, um, you can generally get that on a fair size pelt without jeopardizing the, the quality of fur. Anyhow, 